Hello and welcome to this second video in a series on Python programming. If you didn't complete the first video then now is your chance to go back and do that because we're going to be building on the skills we learnt in the last video. But today we're focusing on numbers and specifically we're going to think about how do we do mathematical operations in Python? How do we add numbers together or subtract them? We're also going to look at how we can uh, have users type numbers in and how we can tell Python to know that those are numbers that need to be dealt with and that will make a bit more sense later. And we're going to wrap everything that we learn up by making a higher or lower guessing game. So let's get started and think about numbers and we're going to do this by starting off straight away jumping into our Python editor, I'm going to be using Replit uh, to create a simple calculator program. So here I am in my Replit editor and I'm just going to use some of the techniques that we used the last lesson to set up a basic program that allows the user to type in two different numbers and we're going to add them together and show them the output. So at the start of my program I'm just going to give the user some understanding of what the program does and just explaining that I'm a calculator and uh, now I need to take in the numbers that the user uh, wants me to add together. So we're going to be using variables and input just like we did in the last video. So for my first number I'm just going to have a variable called num1 and I'm going to assign to it using a single equals character the value that's returned from the input function and in that input function I'm going to give a prompt message to the user so they know what they need to type in. And remember I always put a space at the end of my message uh, just so that there's a bit of space for the user then to write their number in afterwards. So that's the first number, we need to do the same for a second number. And now that the user has typed in two numbers, we need a new variable called result or answer or whatever you want to call it and uh, we're going to set its value to be num1 plus num2. And then finally we want to show the user the result of adding those numbers together, so we need to use print again and we're going to output a message saying something like the answer is and then we're going to include the value that's being stored in memory um, in the location that we're referring to as result. So if you recall from our last um, video this is simply using a print statement to output to the screen and everything that's inside quotes is what we call a string of text and that's um, hard-coded text and then after that hard-coded text we're going to join on the value that's stored in memory and we refer to that value as result. We don't know what value it's going to be, it's called a variable, it can change as the program runs but we can look back through our program and see that well it's going to be the value of num1 and num2. So let's run this program and check it out. Welcome to my calculator. I can take in two numbers and tell you the result of adding them together. Please enter your first number. Okay, let's have four. And please enter your second number. And I've just noticed a spelling mistake that I'll fix in a second. Uh, let's have eight. So four plus eight should be 12. So let's press enter and check it works. Ah, the result is 48. Or more accurately, the result is 4 and 8. So what's going on there? So hopefully the keen-eyed among you has realised that actually 4, 8 is the first number entered and the second number added onto it. So it hasn't actually added these together, in fact it's joined them together just like in the print statement we use a plus sign to join this bit of text to the value stored in result. So that's not really very helpful is it? We want to add the value of numbers, not join two bits of text together. So we need to tell Python that num1 and num2 are numerical data and not text data because here's the key. Input, this function, which takes values from the keyboard and returns them will always, 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 always return data as text data. Whatever you type in, even if it's numbers, it always comes in as text. The computer doesn't really know that these are numbers. They could be any symbol that the keyboard can allow you to type in. So it could be a letter, it could be a, 
a backslash, a colon, an and sign, or a number, or a space. Input doesn't know, it just returns the key presses that you've put in at the keyboard, and they always come back as text data. So if we want to tell Python that num1 should be numerical data, we have to do something different. We have to do this. Now I'll just make some space. So what's going on here? Well, we've still got num1 is equal to the value returned by the input function. But then we're reassigning the value of num1 to be equal to the value of the float function when num1 is passed into that function. So what on earth does float do? Well, float will take any text data or any data that represents um, a floating point number. So that's a number where there's a decimal point that can move within the number. So any number that could have a decimal point and then some more numbers um, is a floating point number. Um, so this function float will take in text that represents numbers and return a numerical version of that data. And once Python has the numerical version of that data, it's then able to do mathematical operations with it. So let's do the same for num2. And I'm just going to remove these spaces. So now I'm converting num1 and num2 into their floating point equivalents. Uh, and now let's see what happens when we run our program. So let's put in our first number again as 4, our second number as 8, and we're expecting the answer to be 12. And we've got ourselves a whole different error. Now this isn't good because before, I mean, we got the wrong outcome, but at least the program didn't crash. Now it's crashed. So what's happening? Well, let's take a moment because you're going to see a lot of errors as you do Python programming, and it's really important you understand how to interpret this and not just ignore it. So first of all, it tells us that the problem's on line 8, which is this line here. It's also telling us that there's something wrong with the type. Uh, so it's expecting data of a different type, and it says must be stra, which means string, not float. Now this error is because what we're doing here is we're trying to join together using this plus sign some text data with the value of result which is now going to be the value of num1, which is a float, plus num2, which is also floating point data. So result is going to be a numerical value. It's not going to be a text value. And the thing is, this plus sign is quite a clever little thing in Python. It can do different things depending on what kind of data it's being used with. If the plus sign is being used with text on both sides, then it joins the text together. When it's used with numbers, it can add two numbers together. But in this instance, this little plus sign is being used with text on one side and a number on the other. So it doesn't know what to do. It's like it's asking, do you want me to join these together or try and add them up together? I don't know what I should be doing, so I'm just going to crash. So just as we had to convert string data into floating point number data, we also have to then convert number data back it into a string so that it can be joined on with this string. And we do that using the str function. So we can do result equals str result. And that says I'm going to reassign the value stored in result to be the output of the str function when I run it on the result value. It's a bit complicated, but if you follow it through, result is number one plus number two. And now result is going to be equal to that same value, but in text format. And because it's now a text format, I can join it with this text in my print statement. So let's run it again and see if we fixed our problem. So four and eight should give us the value 12. And it works. So as you can see, there's quite a bit that you need to be aware of when you're working um, with numerical data in Python, particularly when those numbers are coming in from the keyboard, because input will always give you those values as text and not numbers. So 
This process of converting data from one type to another is called casting. And there's a few casting functions built into Python. If we want to take a string that represents a number and it's just a whole number, that's called an integer, we can use the int function, which will take in string data and give you back a whole number value. In our calculator, we wanted to be able to work with decimal point numbers, not just whole numbers, so we use the float method. And when we wanted to convert our numbers back into text so that they could be used in our print statements and joined with other text, we had to use the str casting function. Now, it's not just addition that you can do in Python. You can also do subtraction by using the minus key. You can do multiplication by using the star symbol, and you'll access that by doing shift and then the eight key. And you can also do division with a forward slash. So let's extend our calculator now so that users can type in two different numbers and then make a choice between doing an addition or a subtraction within their calculator. So we're going to use the techniques of using if and elif that we learned in the last video in order to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just update my instructions slightly to explain that users can choose what mathematical operation they want to do. And now we've still got our first and second number entry, so that's fine. But instead of always adding them together, we now want to use um, if and elif to give our users the choice of choosing whether they want to do addition or subtraction. So we're going to need a new variable to store their choice, and we're going to need to use input to collect their choice. Now I'm going to use a special um, little trick now to make the next bit of text that I write appear on a new line, and that is to use backslash n within my quote. And then I carry on writing from here, and whatever I write after this will appear on a new line. So that might look a little bit complicated, but all it's going to do is say on the screen, what do you want to do with these numbers? And then on a new line, it will say addition, where the A is in brackets to kind of indicate type an A. And then on another new line, it will say subtraction um, with the S in brackets. And then I'm just going to make one more new line and I'm going to provide um, like a little prompt where the user can type in by just putting a greater than sign and a space. So let's just run this just so you can see that. It's not going to work yet because I haven't added my if and my else, but it'd be interesting for you to see this formatted input statement. So I'll enter my first number and my second number. And this is my input statement. It's now saying, what do you want to do with these numbers? A, addition, S, subtraction. And I've got my prompt. And this is where I can type in A or S. But whatever I type in, it will do an addition at the moment because I haven't put if and else in. So let's add that now. So I'm going to use if. And then the value that I want to test is the value being stored in the variable choice. So I'll say if choice is equal to, remember the two equal signs for equal to, and then I'll say a, and because they could type in uppercase or lowercase a, I'm gonna use or, choice is equal to lowercase a as well. Colon, enter, and my code will be indented. And actually this is, I've already got this bit of code written, haven't I? Result equals num1 plus num2. So let's put that, let's tab that in and paste that in. So if they've entered A, then result is going to be num1 plus num2. But now I need to do an elif, which meant else if, and then I can say elif choice is S, then I'll do subtraction. Elif choice is equal to S, or choice is equal to little s, colon, Result is equal this time to num1 minus num2. Get rid of my spaces. And now, whatever the value of result ends up being calculated as, it then still needs to be converted back to a string, and we can output the result. So let's run this and see if it works. Let's try 12 as our first number, and 5 as our second number. 
and I'm going to add them together, which should result in 17. Brilliant, that seems to work. And let's do the same thing, but let's subtract. So let's try 12 again, and 5. But this time I'll do subtraction, and the result should be 7. And it is, and it seems to be working really well. So it's time for you to have a go. What I want you to do now is to extend the calculator program that we've been working on uh, so that users can choose to type in A, S, M or D for addition, subtraction, multiplication or division. Your program should then perform the appropriate calculation using the appropriate symbols and it should then output the result back to the user. So you're going to need to take what we've done and add some more elifs and as well as those elifs you're going to need to make sure that you're using the correct mathematical operations which I'm showing you here so that you can refer to them. Hopefully you didn't find that too challenging we're just adding some more elifs onto the code we already had and then changing the line that calculated the result to use the appropriate mathematical operator depending on which calculation was being performed. So let's just test that our program runs. So let's put in um, 8 and 3 and let's multiply them together. Oh, my multiplication is a bit out, so I'll fix that. Uh, and that seems to work. And let's try a division operation. Let's try and divide these two. And that seems to be working. So rather than just making a boring calculator, we're going to make a higher or lower guessing game. And the game works a bit like this. At the start of the game, one player is going to input a number to guess. This is a number that the other player has to guess. Then we start a little loop where the second player enters a guess and we find out is that guess equal to the number that they need to guess. If it's not, then we'll output guess again. But if it is correct, then we'll output you win and the game's over. Every time the um, guess is incorrect, it just goes back round in a loop asking the user to type in yet another guess and to keep in that loop until eventually they win. So let's make this basic version of the guessing game in Python. Okay, so I've started off my little guessing game with some print statements that's going to print a little sort of title screen. And the first thing I need to do is have the first player enter a number that the second player is going to guess. So to do that, we're going to need a variable that's going to store that number. I'm going to need to use the input function because they're going to be typing this in at the keyboard. So let's have a, a variable called number to guess. And remember from the last video that you cannot have spaces in your variable names. You have to use these underscores instead. So number to guess is going to be equal to input. And the message we're going to show them on the screen is just going to be enter a number for the other player to guess. Now, because we're working with numbers, we're going to need to convert um, our number to guess value into numerical data. Because remember, it's currently coming from the keyboard as text. And we're going to make this a whole number guessing game. So I'm going to use the int function to convert it. So I can say number to guess is equal to int. And inside brackets, I put back number to guess. Now, when we're playing the game, we don't want to make it so easy for the other player by having the guessing number right there on the screen. So we want to kind of push it off the screen. And to do that, I'm just going to have a print statement run 100 times. And that's just going to push, uh, that's going to force the screen to scroll down. Now, rather than copy and pasting print 100 times, I'm going to use a for loop to do this. And a for loop is a bit like a while loop, but it runs for a particular number of times. So we haven't talked about these yet, but you can just type in the code just as I do. So that's going to cause the print statement on line 9 to run 100 times. And now we need the player to enter their guess. So let's have a new variable called um, player's guess or player guess. And let's set that as being equal to the result of input and we're going to say enter a guess. And again, we want to convert it to an int. I'm going to do a little shortcut method. I can actually use int on the same line as input and I can cover and like in case the whole of my input statement 
with the brackets for the int function. So this is now saying that a memory location called player guess is going to be equal to the result of running int on the result of running input. So now we need to use some kind of if statement to check if the guess is correct or not. If player guess equal to number to guess, colon, indentation, print, you win. Otherwise, else, print, guess again. So let's run this and see if it works. So a number for the other player to guess, I'll do 42 and enter. And notice how my screen has now scrolled and now I'm down at the bottom of the screen. Enter a guess. So let's try 30 or 20. Guess again. If I run it again and get it correct this time, so the guess number is 42 and I type in 42, you win. So that's working, but we haven't got a loop going. If they get it wrong, it just ends. So we want to put this in a loop. Now, to do that, we can use a while loop because we don't know how many times the loop needs to run, so we can't use a for loop, but a while loop is a bit like having an if statement that keeps repeating as long as the test it's doing is true. So let's create a new variable, and I'm going to call this one game1, and I'm going to set its value to a special value, false, with a capital F. And if you've got it right, it will change color when you type it. Now, false, along with its counterpart, true, with a capital T, are the two Boolean values. Now, we've talked about text data, we've talked about number data. The other type of data in Python is Boolean data, and that's either true or false. It's very useful in if statements and while loops. So we're going to set a variable called game1 equal to false, i.e. the game is not one. And now I can use a while loop and say while game1 is equal to false, just like an if statement, colon. And then I'm going to take all of my code, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to tab this in so it's indented within my while loop. So it's going to say while game1 is false, keep asking, enter a guess, if they get it right, print you win. If they get it wrong, print guess again. The only thing that we're lacking here is that this will keep running over and over and over again, even if they get it correct. And the reason is we need to set a new value for game one to true if they get it right. And when that's set to true and that finishes running, the Python will come all the way around here again. It will say, do I need to run again? while game one is false. Oh, it's not false, it's true, so I won't run this again, and my game will be over. So let's try this another time. So we'll enter the number 42 again, and let's get it wrong. Let's try 20, let's try 50, let's try 40. It's saying guess again each time. Now let's try 42, you win, and the game finishes. So our game's working pretty well, but remember we're supposed to be making a higher or lower game, and a higher or lower game tells the player whether their guess is too high or too low. So if you get it right, it should look a bit like this. So we enter the number for the other player to guess, and then as they enter their guesses, if they're too high, it says too high, if it's too low, it says too low, and that continues until eventually the right number is hit upon. So what I want you to do now is to complete your own higher or lower games by adapting the code that we've written together. Now, where we've got our if statement inside our while loop, you're going to need to make some changes. Currently, our if statement just tests whether the guess is correct, otherwise it just prints guess again. You're gonna to need to replace that using some elifs and you're going to need to check the value of player guess, and you're going to need to compare it to number to guess using the greater than or less than symbols. These are called relational operators, and these are the various relational operators that you can use. So if you want to test if two values 
are the same, you use the double equals. If you want to check if one number is bigger than another, you use the greater than sign. If you want to check if a number is smaller than the other, you use the less than sign. And those are the only ones you're going to need for this game. There are others in there that you could use, but you, you only need to use the greater than and less than to complete this task. So once you've got your game going, uh, there are some extension tasks for you to attempt as well. The first of those is to research how to generate a random number for the player to guess. So rather than having two players and the first one sets the number to be guessed, instead you have the computer randomly generate that first number. So there's lots of examples of how to do that online. If you just Google generate random integer Python, then you should find plenty of guidance to help you. If you manage that, then I'd like you to use a variable to count how many guesses it takes for the player to win. So you need a new variable, something like number of guesses equals zero at the start. And then every time the while loop runs around, you just need to add one to that. And um, when the while loop's finally finished running, you can print out it took or you took X guesses, whatever the value of that counter then is going to be.